Hello, this is Scott Neumeyer, the Athletic Director at Peace Lutheran School. I'd like to thank you for reviewing our online Athletic Department parent meeting. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different this year, adding some audio, so hopefully it'll allow you to find things a little bit easier and move the presentation along. As I mentioned, I am Scott Neumeyer. I'm the Athletic Director here at Peace. Blake Felsing is the Assistant Athletic Director here. Uh, you'll notice on this slide is our email addresses. Uh, notice they are a little bit different than last year. They're at peacesaginaw.org rather than at peacesaginaw.net. We are doing a changeover in terms of our email addresses and our website, and this is part of it. So please make sure to update your address books accordingly. Peace Lutheran School is a member of the Tri-County Lutheran League and we are very blessed here to have wonderful parents, student athletes, and volunteers who help make our athletic program what it is. And we thank you for that. Our athletic department's mission statement is to assist students in developing their God-given athletic abilities while teaching life skills such as cooperation, self-sacrifice, leadership, fair play, good sportsmanship, and a common concern for others. Here you can see our league alignment for the 2011-2012 school year. Uh, we are a member of the Central Division along with Bethlehem, St. Lawrence Frankenmuth, St. Paul Flint, and St. Paul Millington. Uh, please note that Bethlehem will not be fielding a B team in girls volleyball or girls basketball this year. Uh, we tried to fill in games for, uh, where they would normally be scheduled as best we could. It wasn't always possible, uh, but they will not have B teams in girls volleyball or girls basketball this year. Also, St. Paul Millington will have two boys and two girls B basketball teams this year. So when you look at the calendar, they will be designated as St. Paul Millington 1 and St. Paul Millington 2. Also note, too, that we do have some games against St. Paul Frankenlust, which is uh, in Bay City off of 75 and 84 there. Uh, please make sure when you look at the calendar that you note that it is St. Paul Frankenlust rather than St. Paul Millington and vice versa when you see those games scheduled. Here you have the schedule of sports and activities that we offer here at Peace. Uh, it includes not only the seasons that they take place, but also the grade levels that are involved. We do have a new offering this year. We are having a B girls cheerleading slash pom-pom squad for fourth and fifth grade girls. They will be uh, participating during our B basketball season. Uh, we will still have an A girls cheerleading and pom-pom squad that runs from January through March during the A basketball season and that will be for girls in grades 6 through 8. Here are some of the events we have here at Peace this year. On October 11th we'll be having our annual Panther Pride Soccer Night under the lights game against St. Peter Hemlock that will take place at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Saginaw Township Soccer Complex. On December 3rd and 4th is our annual B Basketball Holiday Classic for our B boys and girls teams. And on February 4th and 5th we have our annual A Basketball Groundhog Classic for our boys and girls A Basketball teams. Uh, on February 23rd we do host two first round uh, boys TCLLA basketball tournament games here at Peace. Our boys will be playing in one of those games and there will be another game as well. Uh, we also, as we have in the last uh, year or two, uh, scheduled some special theme nights. Uh, please make sure to check the athletic calendar or the game schedules to see what special theme nights are scheduled uh, during the seasons. We do have a few changes within the athletic department for this year. Uh, first of all, our home soccer games will be played on our new soccer field here at the school. Uh, the field is still a work in progress, but we're going to try and play games on it this year. The field will be located behind the school, behind the service drive. Uh, so our home games, with the exception of our game under the lights uh, with St. Peter, will be played here at the school. Uh, we are opening up tryouts for the soccer team to 8th grade girls due to some anticipated low numbers in boys in grades 5th through 8th. However, uh, when tryouts occur, if we do have 14 or more boys try out for soccer, according to league rules, the girls will not be allowed to play. Uh, they would only be eligible to play volleyball then at that point. If our numbers, however, are below that 14, then 8th grade girls have the option of playing soccer or volleyball, but they may not do both. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are open, uh, starting up a B cheerleading pom-pom squad for 4th and 5th grade girls. Uh, they'll perform during the B basketball season. The A cheerleading pom-pom squad for 6th through 8th grade girls will continue to perform during the A basketball season. We're also doing something a little bit different with Spirit Wear this year. We will have samples ready to go and available for viewing on registration day, August 17th. And then we will have three order deadline dates for the fall. The first would be September 16th, the second October 13th, and the third November 18th. Uh, any orders submitted up until each of those deadlines uh, will be placed uh, once the deadline is passed. The final deadline is November 18th. Those orders that are received between October and uh, October 13th and November 18th will be placed then and they should be here in time for delivery for Christmas. If you have any questions regarding the new Spirit Wear format, please feel free to contact me. As I mentioned earlier, we are in the process of streamlining the communication between the church and the school, and as a result, all of our school information and email addresses are moving over to peacesaginaw.org. That means that the address for our athletic website has changed. You can see the new web address there. It's athletics.peacesaginaw.org. In case you're wondering, the school web address has changed as well. That is school.peacesaginaw.org. That is the new web address for the school. If you go to the old athletic or school websites, you'll be directed to, redirected to the new ones, uh, but please make sure you update your bookmarks to reflect the change. On the athletic website, uh, you'll find a lot of information, news, game schedules, the athletic calendar that has games on there as well as practices and gym use, uh, gym availability, Athletic forms, uh, such as uh, the physical forms, the athletic contract, uh, the Hold Harmless Agreement, um, and the medical information form are all available there. They can be filled out and printed from there. The athletic handbook, maps to schools, information about our athletic booster club, and contact information as well. I try to keep that as up-to-date as possible to keep you up to date with what is going on. Um, if there's anything that you have a question on or would like to see added to the website, please feel free to contact me, though. Just a reminder that the athletic forms are available on the athletic website. In order for a student to try out for a sport, they must have turned into me their physical, the medical consent form, the hold harmless agreement, and the athletic contract. Those have to be turned into me before they can even try out much less practice or participate in games so please make sure those are turned in to me prior to the first day of practice in each sport as I mentioned each student must have a current physical on file in order to try out for a sport a current physical is defined as one given on or after April 15th of the previous school year so if your son or daughter had a physical taken and turned into me either on or after April 15th, 2011, then that physical is valid for this school year. If, however, as is the case for most students, that physical was done prior to April 15th, 2011, then they will need to get a new current one in order to participate this year. Here we have the guidelines for athletes here at Peace Lutheran School. These are also printed in our athletic handbook. In general, tryouts are held for each sport that we offer here at Peace, except for track and Saturday morning basketball. Uh, for those two sports, any student that wishes to participate may do so, provided that they are academically eligible. If a student is sick or absent or due to extraneous circumstances is unable to make the first day of tryouts, they need to contact the coach prior to that first day of tryouts to discuss the situation uh, with them. Uh, prior or after tryouts take place, uh, for those sports that uh, do have cuts, players will be notified whether they made the team or not via a sealed envelope or phone call from the coach. Here at Peace, we believe that all people have been blessed by God with certain talents. We realize that God has blessed certain individuals with athletic abilities. Therefore, it has been approved by the school board and faculty here at Peace to establish cuts at the A and B levels. We believe that as student athletes prepare for a higher level of competition, the players who have been give, gifted in the area of athletics 
should be given the opportunity to develop those skills to a higher level. When a student is cut from a team, the decision may allow the student the opportunity to discover and use other talents that God has blessed him or her with. Also note that 8th grade athletes are only allowed to participate on the A team here at Peace. Uh, also, 7th graders who played on the B team typically may not participate on the A team as well, uh, only under special circumstances. These are Tri-County Lutheran League rules. The issue of playing time in athletics is always a sensitive one and that's why I believe it, we believe it's important to address that issue with not only the student athletes but also the parents prior to the start of the season. Here at Peace we emphasize participation especially at the younger levels, the Saturday morning basketball, the B levels. Uh, winning isn't the ultimate goal at those levels. As we get higher into the A level, uh, more emphasis is placed on winning as it is when students move on to the freshman level and JV level and varsity levels in high school. Uh, as a result, players may not always receive an equal amount of playing time, particularly on the higher level teams. Playing time in general is based on team level, attitude, practice presence, and skill levels. All practices here at Peace are limited to one hour and 45 minutes. The only exceptions there are early season practices prior to the season starting those might extend to two hours. Uh, all practices here must end before 8 o'clock p.m. Practices uh, for the most part are held at the Lawndale campus here at the school uh, but due to scheduling conflicts they may also be held over at the Adams campus at the church gym. All practices or no practices can con conflict with Advent or Lenten services. As a result, any practices scheduled on days where there is an Advent or Lenten service must end one hour before the service starts. There will be no practices held either before school or on Sundays. Students must be at school before 10 a.m. in order to participate in a game or practice. If a student is injured or sick in PE class, the student cannot practice or play in a game that evening. The general assumption there is that if they are too sick or injured to participate in a school activity, then they must also be too injured or too sick to participate in a game that evening. Exceptions to these two rules may be made due to an extenuating circumstance, such as a doctor's appointment or a funeral or things of that nature. Uh, but the coach and or athletic director should be contacted prior to that if possible uh, in order to be made aware of the situation. The athletic department does not have a department-wide policy regarding tardiness. We leave it up to the individual coach as to how they handle tardiness within their own team. Uh, most coaches will go over that policy with the students and with the parents prior to the start of the season. If a student is tardy or is going to be absent from practice, they must provide the coach with a written excuse or phone call to explain the reason for the tardiness or absence prior to the start of practice or a game, uh, not after the fact. Also, the notification of the tardiness or absence should not be done through an intermediary. In other words, Johnny said to tell, Johnny said, Jimmy told me to let you know that he wasn't going to be at practice today. Uh, that is unacceptable. The student and or the parent should contact the coach directly. To help us keep track of who is in the building and for student safety, those students who are remaining after school for a practice or a game must report to Latchkey at 3.20 p.m. and remain there until their practice or game begins. The only exception to that is the situation in which the student is a member of a team that has a teacher as the coach and that teacher has given permission for students to remain in their classroom until the game or practice begins. Transportation to all away games is the responsibility of the parents. If a parent is unable to provide transportation for their child to a game, uh, please contact the coach to arrange other transportation if needed, or perhaps they can carpool with another family that is heading to the game, but if that cannot be arranged, please call the coach uh, and make them aware of the situation. 
Also, please be courteous and prompt when picking up your child for practices and games. Uh, the coaches are busy as well and oftentimes have places to be after practices and games. Uh, and they are required to remain until the last player uh, is picked up by their parents. Um, and so in order to be courteous to them, please be prompt when picking up your child from practices and games. If the weather is poor and school is called off, no practices, games, or performances will be held. Uh, there is a slight exception to that uh, for league tournaments uh, due to scheduling conflicts and moving on to the next uh, sports season. Uh, only in very rare circumstances will games ever be played uh, on which there are days in which there is no school. Uh, please be sure to check the athletic department website for game and practice cancellations. Also this year we do have a new mass phone notification system and we will be making use of that as well to uh, help you be aware of changes in scheduling uh, for games and practices. Approximately every two weeks an eligibility check is done. Uh, for exact dates of the uh, eligibility checks, you can check the school and athletic calendar on the school website and the exact dates of the eligibility, eligibility checks can be found there. At an eligibility check, the policy is simply this. If a student has an F or an incomplete, they are ineligible. Or if they have two or more grades lower than a C-, minus, they are ineligible. What happens next will be explained on the next slide. When determining academic eligibility, please note that any D or F earned in art or computer will count as an infraction when determining eligibility. If at an eligibility check, eligibility requirements are not met, in other words, the student has an F or an incomplete or they have two or more grades below a C-, then that student is under suspension for one week. During that one week, they are not allowed to participate in practices or games. They will receive a note on that eligibility check date to take home to their parents explaining the situation. It will also then state that the next reevaluation will be at the next eligibility check, which is approximately two weeks later. So if a student, for example, is ineligible beginning April 1st, then they would be ineligible for practices or games for a week. A week later they can come back and participate in practices and games and then in general the next eligibility check would be the following week. If at that next eligibility check or after their grade has not come up in the subjects that they were having difficulty in then they would have their participation revoked for the remainder of the season. Modifications to the eligibility standard due to a student's level of academic capability may be made at the discretion of the teacher, athletic department, and the school administration. We are willing to work with students, but they also must be willing to work themselves. For example, let's say we have an eligibility check in which a student is failing math class. As a result, they would be under suspension for a week. They'd be allowed to come back for practices and games for a week and then at the next eligibility check they are still failing math class however their grade in the class their percentage in the class has improved uh, under certain circumstances the teacher or athletic department may grant a waiver and allow the student to continue to participate in athletics as they have shown improvement However, at any point during the process, if a student starts to have missed assignments, they generally lose any kind of leeway from the athletic department in terms of flexibility uh, regarding the eligibility requirements because those missed assignments are a sign that they are not putting forth the effort that they need to in the classroom. Um, if they are, if they have gotten things in on time, then uh, they may uh, be granted a waiver from the teacher or athletic department. If at any time during the season though those grades start to drop again or there are missed assignments, in all likelihood the student would have their eligibility remote, revoked excuse me, for the remainder of the season. Uniforms are given to players at the beginning of the season. They are to be worn for competition only. 
Students must change into regular clothes immediately after the game. Uh, the exception of that is for soccer players and track athletes who can wear their uniforms home from the game, obviously, because there typically are no locker rooms there. Volleyball, basketball players, however, must change out of their uniforms after the game. Uh, they should not be walking around in the gym or the cafeteria in their uniform at any time. Team sweatshirts may be ordered during the season. Uh, it is not required, uh, but that is an option uh, if a team chooses to do so. At the end of the season, please make sure that the uniform is washed according to the manufacturer's specifications and turned into the athletic director. School issued uniforms must be turned in one week after the last game, performance, or meet. A reminder notice will be sent home with students, making them aware of that. If the uniform is not returned after one week, a dollar per day fine or five dollar per week fine is initiated until the uniform is returned to the athletic director. The late fees must be included when the uniform is returned. If a student comes to me with a uniform but doesn't have the late fee, I tell them to hold on to it until they have both. Uh, that makes uh, the housekeeping portion of that uh, chore much easier for me. If the coach does not collect the uniform, which they typically don't, please have the students return the washed uniform to me within a week. Uh, in general, they can drop it off in my classroom uh, before or after school or during a break. In order for the athletic department to operate smoothly, we need help from everyone involved in order to make the seasons a success. As a result, parents are, re requ are required to work at games during their child's athletic season. Uh, work schedules are sent out at the beginning of each sports season. They're sent home with the students. Uh, indicating what games uh, the parents are assigned to work. Typically it's about three or four games per season, helping out with things such as concessions, cleanup, scoreboard, scorebook, things of that nature. If you are assigned to a particular date and cannot make it, please find a sub from somebody else on the list. See if you can perhaps switch with somebody else um, or find an alternate. If for some reason you cannot do that, please contact me and I'll see if we can make arrangements or I can put you in touch with somebody who might possibly be able to fill in. Uh, we want to thank you in advance for your help. Without your help and volunteering, uh, there's no way we could uh, do the things that we do here at Peace. From time to time, a parent may have a concern with a coach regarding their child. Uh, it is for that reason that we have the 24-hour rule here at Peace. This gives uh, coaches and parents and players a, a cooling off time after a game uh, to gather their thoughts and, and make sure that everyone discusses the situation with a, with a clear mind. We encourage parents to wait 24 hours after a game before talking with a coach about their child. The appointment should be made with the coach first. We believe it's important to talk to the person that the issue is with directly uh, rather than go above or around them, it's important to talk to the coach first. If after talking to the coach the issue is unresolved, then an appointment may be scheduled with the athletic director and coach to further discuss the matter. Season passes are available for purchase during registration or at home games. Membership in the Athletic Booster Club is included with the season pass. Uh, for information about the Booster Club and its bylaws, you can see the athletic website. The cost for the season passes are listed on this slide. Once again, Hicks Studios is taking action photos of selected home contests for our athletic teams. Hicks will come to our games and then take some pictures and post those pictures on their website for family and friends to purchase. The photos can even be made into posters, collages, and other items. To view the photos that they have taken, you can follow the steps below. These steps are also uh, available and printed on the athletic website. If you would like more information, feel free to contact Tick Studios or see the flyer on the bulletin board in the Commons area or contact myself. 
Here we have a list of the coaches for our athletic teams for the 2011-2012 school year. Uh, we are in need of Saturday morning girls and boys basketball coaches, so if you're interested in, in either of those volunteer positions, please contact me. We are also in need of a B boys basketball coach. Uh, the season there runs generally from late October through Christmas, so if you are interested in that volunteer position, please contact me as well. This concludes our online parent presentation. I want to thank you again for the, taking the time to view the presentation. Uh, we hope you found it beneficial. The idea behind it is to um, save you some time rather than set, uh, set up a special meeting here at the school to go over the information. We allow you to get the information that we think is important at your convenience. If at any time, however, you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, thank you once again, and we look forward to seeing you this year.